Good morning, everybody. I just want to echo Pat's comments on how much we value your participation. It is truly a spectacular way to start a day, and it's certainly a wonderful way uh, to culminate a lot of the activities that has led us to this point at the 34th Annual Sun and Fun Fly-In. So please know how much you are appreciated. Please know how much we uh, enjoy your activity.
can uh, only tie the record for uh, low altitude flying. So the basics uh, remain pretty much the same and when people say, well, you know, what can we do differently? Uh, there's, there are a number of things that can be done and the safety is largely up to you. It's as safe as you, the pilot, choose to make it. Safety is paramount, just like it is in the film industry. I mean, going back to the film industry, uh, you know, everybody comes to me and they talk about that, this stunt or that stunt they've seen, and they say, gee whiz, they must pay you a lot of money to risk, you know, your life and do that stunt. And you have to understand that they don't pay me the money to take the risk. Right. They pay me the money because I have a reputation of doing it and eliminating the risk and know how to do it safely. That's and that's what they pay you for. Uh, but it's not the risk that they pay you for because if, if they were paying you for the risk, they wouldn't do it. It wouldn't be in there. And on flying, I treat it the same way. I mean, I go through a good pre-flight, always check the oil. I not only look at the fuel gauges, I open the cap. Well, I've been in composites since I was 15, Tom, and uh, built all kinds of things. First of all, it's very crash-worthy uh, from my point of view in the uh, accident business. We have people walk away from accidents which, had they been made of something else, I'm, I'm convinced they wouldn't have made it. Um, but uh, there's a certain intimidation factor about composites. A lot of people just don't want to learn something new. And so we have people say, oh, I just, I don't know if I can do that. Composites are, are really quite easy to learn. These airplanes are quite repairable. Uh, there's an old wives' tale that when you pull the handle on the chute system that the airplane is scrap written off. Ten of the twelve that we've had have been returned to service, for example. I think the most significant changes in aviation that we've seen are the changes in cockpit technology. You know, for years and years, nothing really changed uh, significantly in cockpit technology in general aviation airplanes. And then beginning in the 1990s, um, particularly, yeah, particularly after uh, Cessna restarted the single engine line because it gave volume again to aircraft production, uh, we started seeing some really exciting aircraft technology with the glass cockpits, with the GPS, with uh, now uh, the wide area augmentation system that gives the equivalent of an ILS at many airports that otherwise couldn't possibly have it. Uh, the the uh, weather in the cockpit, uh, traffic in the cockpit, all of this wonderful technology. And, you know, John and I were talking on the way out here. One of the things that you used to hear 15, 20 years ago, if you flew across the country and you were listening on 121.5, is you would hear uh, almost every trip, you would hear a student pilot on 121.5 who was lost. Can anybody hear me? Can somebody help me, you know, find my airport, get somewhere and so on? You don't hear that anymore. I don't think they're lost the way they used to be. And I think that the new technology in the cockpit has gone a long way towards getting rid of uh, those kinds of problems. I was just in a conference yesterday where I had to speak, and it was about what are we going to do in the aerospace industry. All these people, the young people who went into aerospace engineering, aviation, uh, for the Apollo effort, they're now retirement age and they're leaving. And they're really having trouble finding people to replace them. And the aerospace industry, as you know, much of it involves classified work for the government. They can't import scientists from other countries the way a lot of other people are doing. So they really have to hire Americans who can pass the security clearance. Uh, they're really in tough shape. It's tremendous for safety and situational awareness. And every small airplane should have this. I predict in the next decade or so, just as though today we have GPS in every airplane and it's cheap and affordable and reliable, this type of technology will be in all airplanes in the next decade as well.